throughout this event, making it all the way to the final in his first ever collegiate appearance. He was also in the finals of the Junior Nationals. So Danny Cordova is very much a scrapper, but he's also got great shot making. Martin Mulkerns is one of the best shot makers I've seen in today's game with both hands. So Daniel Cordova will have certainly a huge challenge in front of him, but I expect Daniel to put up a very good match. This should be very competitive here this morning. Okay, well here we are. This is the first serve going to Martin Mulkerns from the University College Dublin in Ireland. He is serving to Danny Cordova, who is a crowd favorite here. And of all the players that we've seen this weekend, Danny Cordova gets the crowd motivated more than any other. Here's a big setup for Mulkerns, and he puts the first one down for a point like a laser. Well, Danny has to do a little bit more with that return of serve. He can't get away with the patty cake game against Eminem. And there's another point for Mulkerns, who lost a close tiebreaker yesterday in the men's semifinals of the doubles division, a game that went 20-27. And Martin has played a lot of matches here this week, Dave. He's played, this is his fifth singles match. He's also played three doubles matches. It's a lot of time on the court. And that's a lot of balls that he's hit. That shot right there confuses me a little bit from Cordova. And then he finally does get it down that left wall with the left hand. And he's in the service box for the first time. He has to be somewhat nervous here, Dave even though he has been the underdog, and he's playing with house money right now. Cordova has the whole family back home in Chihuahua, Mexico, watching this live broadcast at racefor8.com. And he goes in for that corner kill and gets a point on the scoreboard. Every point that he scores probably lessens the fact that uh, those nerves are starting to accumulate. Makes him more comfortable. He actually looks a little bit tight physically to me right now. I think that soreness will dissipate in the next couple of minutes as he works his way into a good sweat. Well, Dave, I got here just before 7 o'clock this morning. And uh, Danny Cordova got here at 13 minutes after 7. He stepped on the court and only left one time, and that was get a drink of water. He was on the court for 47 straight minutes warming up with just about a 30-second break. Martin Mulkerns came in 11 minutes before game time with his iPod in his ear. I don't necessarily think that warming up, Dave, before the match for even an extended period of time gets rid of that soreness. I believe it's the adrenaline that gets rid of that soreness. Once you feel the heat of the battle, all those aches and pains tend to just disappear. I like how our referee is standing up in the back corner next to our camera. That's going to give him a better perspective. And there is a double bounce and another point for the sniper, Martin Mulkerns. Well, Danny actually hit his best shot of the match Four, there six, thus one. far. A very low kill, but Martin with the soft hands Picks it up. Daniel should have been moving forward there. Instead, he hung back behind that restraining line. Look at that power, Dave. Even though Danny lost that point, I like how he played that point. He dictated the action. He pushed Martin into the backcourt. He drove the ball two or three times and then had a very easy setup that he didn't convert. Yesterday in Martin's semifinal, he was in complete control of virtually every rally. Here we've already seen Daniel taking control of a number of early rallies, although he finds himself trailing 5-1. That was indecision there from Danny. As he initially planned to take that off the back wall, Dave, but changed his mind at the last second, just wasn't prepared to hit that fly kill from 32 feet. Score here is six to one. Mulkerns is in a commanding lead right now, and there's now the seventh point. I expect to see a timeout called from Cordova, who plays more of that traditional style of game that Dave Chapman Seven, has after three points, but he's already passed that. Sometimes players look at those timeouts as being a weakness, like you forced me to call a timeout and I'm 
showing you that I'm that vulnerable right now. Other players try to play through it. One, serve seven. Well, I think, Dave, as I mentioned, that Danny's trying to get that adrenaline, that, that sweat going right now and trying to work his way into this match physically. And if he takes a timeout, that's more time that it will take for his muscles to loosen up. That out. I thought that should have been played over. It looked like Danny was screened, had to take a different angle at that ball, but no Seven, call six, and no one. complaint. Seven to one here, first game, best two out of three. First two played the 21 tiebreaker to 11. This is the men's division one open finals and now the eighth point for Mulcairns, representing the University eight, College six, Dublin. One. Danny Cordova from UTEP. Both these guys, Dave, 2012 collegiate All-Americans. Look at that shot, Dave, that's unbelievable. Well, that's what makes you an All-American, Dave, is that kind of shot. Let's take an instant replay of that last rally as Danny doesn't do anything with that soft serve. Here's Danny Cordova walking to the front portion of this court right here. He doesn't really want to leave the court. He just wants to try to get into some kind of rhythm that you were talking about. You're watching the 60th United States Handball Association's four-wall collegiate national handball championships here at Missouri State University, Springfield, Missouri at Plaster Sports Complex. Here is the replay now, of that watch last this. play. Now on that return to serve there, Dave, he's got that ball with his right hand and look at that perfect pass that hits the sidewall behind Danny, low enough that it doesn't come off the back wall. But on that return to serve, if we can load that up one more time, Dave, and talk about the options Danny has on that return, I think now let's he stop it. Wait, hold on. Let's stop the, the play right here, Linda, right now. Dave, from this point forward, what are the options that Martin McCurrens have where Danny is coming up past that dotted line? Well, from here, Dave, there's almost no chance for Danny to win this point. If Martin hits any type of above average shot, the point's over. Martin can kill the ball straight down the right. He can kill it in the right corner. He can kill it off the middle of the front wall, or he can hit that blistering two wall pass. So, really, he's got four or five options. Okay, let's advance. We'll advance this video here. And Watch you see what Martin him. does. Well, you see Martin noticing Danny moving up in front of him on his left hip, and he just drills the ball behind him with that amazing two-ball pass. Very smart shot. You see how Martin delays his swing there. He forces Danny to commit, and then once Danny's committed, Martin knows the right shot to hit. That's a great replay right there from our director, Linda Manny. Now, if... If uh, Danny would have stayed back to the dotted line, Martin could have gone left corner kill in the front wall to force Danny up front. There could have been a lot of different options there, even pop it back to the ceiling. But if you were to teach the two-wall pass, you'd show that clip right there. It was an absolutely beautiful two-wall pass executed from Martin Melkerns. Well, I actually wanted to talk about that return of serve because if you return the ball into that area, you have no chance to win the point, not against a great player like Martin. And there's another point for Melkerns. But I'd like to see Danny take that ball back to the ceiling off the left side wall on this soft serve, Ten, or one. reverse the direction of the ball, use the spin off the left side wall and flick the ball into the right side wall and hit a three wall wraparound return. Let's see if he does it here. There he goes, Dave. That's what you're talking about just now, right? Well, that time he took it with his left, but that was still a, a good return. Those you have to remember, Dave, that Every serve comes off just a little bit differently, so sometimes you have to let that slow two-wall serve come off the back wall. Other times you're taking it with your left hand, and other times you're taking it on the way up with your right hand. You should have a shot for each one of those situations. Right now, it doesn't look like Danny really knows what to do with that serve. Having played Danny, Dave, he struggles with the soft serve and the Z serve to some extent. He returns the power serve very well he's accustomed to seeing the power serve and it's a smart play for martin who i'm sure has done his homework and has come in here realizing the strength of danny's power serve return and we haven't seen martin hit a power serve yet see what type of serve we'll get points for cordova here and he Four. gets that ball to the front court into the corner but he feels he missed hit it well danny didn't extend and he didn't Hit the first back wall set up in that rally cleanly. Screen serve, screen serve. I believe that ball's very close screen to being serve. a screen, Dave. Well, it was called a screen. Okay. But Martin hit a great return there. I'm not sure why he would even want a screen. If you're able to flick the ball down the left side wall, 
it obviously didn't affect you all that much. Well, I think he just wants the referee to see it because the previous serve was, I think, worse. And he gave that back wall set up to Danny Cordova, and Danny didn't do anything with it. I think he's saying, this is two in a row now, guys. I don't want this to happen every single time I'm returning a ball. And you know, you were at the pro stop in Salt Lake City serves too. You know, a week ago, and you're seeing a lot of the referees letting these little close screens go by. You almost have to check them up early and let them know that it's a screen, at least to be looking for it. These guys, both Dave, just 18 years old. Remember last year's Whoa, final day, we had two. two seniors. Nikolai Nahorniak defeating Victor Perez. This is the new generation of collegiate handball stars. These guys don't need three or four years of seasoning, Dave, at the collegiate level, appearing in, their fi 13, in the final 13, in their first two. ever appearance. Yeah, I think we'll be seeing both of these <laughs> players for the next three years quite frequently. The only out. weakness I see David Martin's game is when he's off balance, he doesn't really have a good defensive strategy. He just tends 13. to hit the ball as hard as he can. Gives a lot of setups when he's off balance. It's very difficult to get Martin off balance because his power forces you to be off balance. Look at that power right, right there, up. Dave. He takes that ball around and just snaps it off the front wall a couple inches high back into the server's box. Two. He has Mulcairns. He's sticking with that serve, too. Well, if a serve's working, there's no reason to go away from it. This is all starting with the poor return to serve from Daniel Cordova to 14 serves two. Pretty simple serve, but Danny just doesn't seem to have the answer for it. Well, Martin's exceptional above the head with his left hand, so that makes his second shot choice also shot good. Out. I don't believe Danny's putting it in a bad spot. He's putting it right where you want to, but his Martin's left hand above Two his head is serves well, that was actually only the second time that Danny's put that return in the back left corner. The other times they've been right down the middle of the court or short in the court. Look at that amazing fist control. Here it is. That's where he steps in with that power. Beautiful paddle kill there, a la Tony Healy, Dave. And I mentioned that yesterday in our interview with Martin that he sort of reminds me of a combination between Paul Brady and Fourteen, Tony Healy. Two. I see a lot of Tony Healy here. There, there is a Tony Healy that plays that ground and pound game. Well, Tony Healy can do it all. And Daniel loses his footing there. Are you all right? I think Danny's considering just staying down on the ground for a while. 15 serves two. 15 to two. While Kern's changing his serve up, Dave. Here's Daniel a big setup. has to shoot that shot. Nice call, thank you. And the crowd likes sportsmanship. Well, Kearns dives in, backhand flip, doesn't uh, get it on one bounce, got it on two, and he two, raises his hand. 15. Despite 16 kill shots from Martin here early in this first game, that's the first time the crowd has clapped. <laughs> they clap on the, on the sportsmanship. Now, you, you seem to track those, and I, it, it doesn't quite register with three, you. I, sir, I know it's a 15. subject that you've talked about multiple times. Well, as the great Bobby Jones once said, they ought to applaud you for not robbing a bank. <laughs> You're going to pick up double bounces on yourself. It's just the way the game's played. Uh, well, Kern's going back to that underhand. 15, uh, maybe not changing three. it again, Dave. 
the fourth different serve we've seen from right Alkerns, and he's not going to go back to that one again. We're going to see five coming up here. Well, what Martin shortly. has to do there is look back Three to hold serve, Daniel 15. back into that back court so he doesn't take that Z serve out of the air. But incredibly, that was just his first Z serve, and Daniel was in the exact spot that he needed to be to four get the fly serves, kill return. 15. Danny now has four. I don't really understand that shot from Daniel taking the ceiling shot on the short hop. Not really much to be gained there. 15 serves four. Now Mark Kern's going back to the one that brought him about 13 of these points. Daniel getting himself a little bit too close to that revolving door ceiling shot off the back wall. But what I mean by that, Dave, is that he can't really extend his arm to drive the ball or shoot the ball off the back wall because he's the ball's in a little bit too tight to his body. Unbelievable play right here from Mulkerns, who just went 16, seven consecutive third, shots fourth. to the roof, and the first one he lowered was the point earner. Another point for the sniper. Four. I'm not sure if Danny really thinks he can win at this point. He looks really deflated. You can see it in his shot selection and his lack of power on his shots. Yesterday you saw a different Daniel Cordova, and obviously this is another level in competition. But as you know, Dave, having played sports, when you're in there against somebody and you feel like, there's really nothing I can do. Your will is broken. And right now, it looks like Danny's will might be broken a little bit. 18, sir, four. Martin's given him no openings whatsoever. And this is what happens, Dave, when you play at that top world-class uh, level. It's not as though you can isolate somebody's offhand up high to the ceiling or four, return sir, a 18. serve. Everyone's got every shot at that top level, so you really have to just Focus on your own game. Make the best shot you can make and then take advantage of your opportunities. That ball almost hit Cordova. I think Martin's shown us today that he does have a roof game. We didn't see this much throughout the tournament. Well, Shut up. I did. I'm not sure about you, you suggested yesterday Isaac Acosta going to the roof, but Martin's got the best roof game by far in this event. 18 serves four. Uses his height very well playing the ceiling game. number of the setups that Martin's given Daniel in the front court with his right hand. And when I say setup, I mean very slight opening. Daniel's Four, punch sir, passing 18. the ball rather than shooting it into that right corner or down the right wall. And that's his best shot. But he hasn't used it thus far on the few opportunities he's had up in the front right. Replay. Ball. Over, four serves, 18. Four serves, 18. You can barely hear the referee with that court mic. I'm not sure if it's turned on or we just don't hear it. Well, how loud do you need to hear it? Well, I, I had to read his lips. Hmm. Take my headset off to hear him. Shut up. Martin just takes that huge cut at the back wall set up with his right hand. 18 serves four. Terrible return from Danny Cordova. And he does well to 
keep the rally alive there, but Point. only prolongs the inevitable. Timeout, it's your second, 19 serving four. Perhaps Danny taking a timeout here, trying to score a few points coming into the second game. He's not going to come back and win this game, but if he can score four or five points, maybe he can build some confidence and a little bit of momentum going into game number two. You're watching the 60th United States Handball Association's four-wall collegiate national championships. We're at Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri at the Plaster Sports Complex. This is the Division I men's open finals between Martin Mulkerns, representing the University College Dublin and University of Texas El Paso's Daniel Cordova, who's got the whole family back home watching him on this live broadcast, as well as Martin and his family and supporters from UCD. I want to thank them for tuning in, watching their fellow countrymen play handball, and what a handball player he is. Dave, just looking at Martin Mulkerns, and, and of course Danny Cordova too, they both have the tools to be top pro players here on our pro tour. Martin seems to be pretty advanced. Could he compete in today's in today's world with the race for eight? Could he be a qualifier and a guy that could break into the top ten? All right, yes, time absolutely, in. without question. I believe that playing a full season on the race for eight pro tour, so Martin far. would fall anywhere between nineteen four to eight four. range and perhaps even higher. I haven't yeah. seen any weakness in Martin's game whatsoever. Over, 19 serving four. He's proven that he's got a lot of endurance and conditioning, Dave, because this is his ninth match of the week. Nine matches in just about three days. It's unbelievable. And we won't mention any names, Dave. I'm sure you might, particularly your broadcast partner. I see a lot of guys that Martin would give a lot of problems on that race for a pro tour. Four, serving 19. Well, aside from the, the top three right now, I could see a competitive matches with an Alan Garner and Charlie Shanks, who are four and five right now, taking Dave Chapman out of the mix uh, because he is injured. But I see those two being the ones that he would probably be most competitive with. And, and yourself as well, ranked number six or seven up and down on that race for eight ladder. But I certainly see him as right there with Armando Ortiz and, and Danny's brother, Luis. Shut up. I mean, he's got all the tools. Danny Cordova serving here at four to, I believe, 20. Four serving 19. 19, sorry. Very difficult to judge how Martin would do against the firepower of these guys and you really never know unless you see it. You never know how you're going to react to somebody's power and game until they actually face off. The rest is just speculation but I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be right there in the mix. It's point. I mean, it is true. We don't know what it would be like playing against a, a top player who also has the same type of ability. Five serving 19. But from what we're seeing here at this tournament, he has the tools. There's a screen serve, no call from the ref. Replay, I think it's a good no call. Please. The ball pops up off the back wall to Martin's right hand. He wants that shot. And Over he wanted five it, but he hit it right directly straight off of his hand right into Cordova. So the ball had to have been close. That's a beautiful Cut return. Out. But I also think, Dave, on the previous serve that you thought should have been a screen Martin was leaning to his left five. he jumped left and then recovered so I don't really think that's a screen we do give the refs a hard time Dave but let's not forget that it's a very difficult game to call it's very fast paced and so many subjective uh, calls in the court much like uh, in the NBA or the NFL where the referees are trained for years and they're Five, still making 19. obvious mistakes. Very difficult point. to make perfect calls in real time. Six serves 19. And once again, 
Daniel gets Martin leaning right, gets the huge setup. Great left hand shot from Daniel, and I think that's the best shot in the front court because Martin's got those Seven, long arms seven, and a really good reach, Dave. And jamming the ball right at his feet seems to be the most effective play when Martin's in the front court. You don't want to really go to the ceiling with Martin because he's got an incredible ceiling game. And if you hit the two all pass, he's got the reach and extension uh, to actually do something with it. So by jamming the ball right at his feet and taking his reach away from him, Dave, I think Daniel could win a lot of points and get a lot of setups. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And there's that terrible return once again from Daniel Cordova. He has the ability, Dave, to hit the ball to the ceiling with either hand. He also can hit wraparound shots. Over, 19 serving seven. He's hitting this soft paddle that's bouncing into the side wall. Set up. Now, not to be too critical of Daniel because that serve can be very difficult. And you know, having played against that serve, Seven, it looks 30, so easy 19. from out here, but that serve comes right into your body. I know, Dave, one of the guys I play at home hits that serve incredibly well, and there's times I feel like I can't really do anything but just flip it back. Point. Now you're starting to see some points here from Cordova. It looks like he's wearing down Malkern's just a little bit. Eight serving 19. Eight serves 19, and you're right, sometimes that serve will just, you end up doing 10 cup trying four or five different ways of returning it and every single one doesn't seem to work. Sometimes there's no solution. Well, much like any serve, if it's hit perfectly, there's not much of a defense for it. Looks like Cordova's starting to settle down just a little bit. Well, I love the maturity and the timeout of Daniel Cordova to call that timeout when he was trailing 19 to four because he knows every second that Martin's on the court is another opportunity for him to wear Martin down and build a little bit of momentum. And that's what he's doing right now. This might come off too hard. And it does, and Martin Mulkerns gets the side out. That's normally a ball that Daniel picks up, Dave. We'll see if he can get his legs going from this point forward, but that ball was right in front of him. He didn't turn sideways and take that first step. He just lunged at it and that's a very smart serve for Martin but a nice return Wow nice shot right there from Cordova inside out down the right wall three inches high with power well, that's the patented Cordova 19. finisher both Daniel and his brother hit that inside Short. out right hand kill straight down the right wall. Second serve. You know it's coming, but there's nothing you can do about it. Nice serve right there. Poked up front, and Mulkerns gets Just the side out. out. And he's actually apologizing to Cordova as he should. Well, if he was really <laughs> sorry, he wouldn't take the point. He wouldn't take the side out. So that was all, all fake for show for the cameras. 19 to 8. I would just say it's not all that genuine of an apology. Second serve. Unbelievable power right there from Alkerns. Now brings it to 20 to 8 game point here in the first one. Game point, serving eight. Short. So similar, Dave, to what we've seen from. Martin's matches throughout this Second event, serve. not allowing any of his opponents into any game thus far. And there it is. Martin Mulcairns takes the first one, 21 to 8. We'll have game number two coming up in five minutes. Stay here in Missouri for the conclusion of this match, Men's Open Division I Finals. Missouri State University for the 60th United States Handball Association's Four Wall Collegiate National Championships here at racerate.com.
Yeah. That's awesome. Danny, you serve first, uh, second game. And we are back live, Missouri State University, game number two, as Dan Cordova steps into the right, server's box, two. representing zero, the University zero. of Texas El Paso, serving to Martin McKearns from University College Dublin in Ireland. McKearns, the sniper, kept Danny Cordova under nine points in the first game. I believe this will be a different game, though, Dave with Cordova scoring at least in single digits, or double digits, excuse me. That's an amazing skinny V pass from the sniper. <laughs> amazing was how Danny was able to track it down and stay in this rally. Set up. This is the men's finals of the Division I Open. Zero, sir. Class Zero. here at Missouri State University at the Plaster Sports Complex. Set up. Very nice back wall shot there from Daniel Cordova. Zero serve, zero. And this is the serve that Danny will need to use here in this second game. Getting a lot of setups off his power serve. He's mixing it up well, going left and right. It's a point. Referee calling a point there. It's a point. I don't know if I agree with that, One Dave. Serve, I mean, zero. he, he well, stepped about five steps sideways and. <laughs> The ball still wasn't was still alive at that moment. Well, Martin's court positioning there was terrible, and he took a bad angle at the ball, but the ball two, then two, popped zero. up. I don't think it was a bad call either way. Side out. Martin now zero serves two. Twenty-one points away from winning his first collegiate national handball championships. These Irish players don't come here too. Have a good time. They're here to win championships. Martin told me he was let down because he wasn't in the finals of the of the doubles. He felt like he let his partner down. I said, "Well, you're on the eve of winning your first Zero. collegiate championships in the singles," and he said, "No, I want to I want to slam the tournament for four straight years. This is my goal." They come in here with high expectations. Second serve. There's other players that come here just to try to make the semis or the quarterfinals. These guys are looking at tying Dave Chapman's record. Well, Dave Chapman's record, much like the 72 Miami Dolphins, is still safe. So he just popped his champagne last night. As there now will be Three, another seven, year zero. that no one will have a chance to win. For although, Dave. Megan Mihilos. Megan Mihilos is actually yeah. the only one that can pop the champagne because Dave Chapman did not win the doubles in one of his years as his partner was zero, unable to sir. take the court. Three. It was right here on this court, in fact. Or this this town, I should say. His partner at that time, Dave, suffering from some sort of poisoning. Wasn't food. Oh, liquid-induced poisoning, they mm. say. Martin McCurrence now on the scoreboard. His partner was Mike three. Gustafson, I believe. Point. Cordova just gives... Mulkern's a freebie. Mulkern's now up to two. two serves, Back to three. that serve that gathered so many points for Mulkern's. This is going to be a huge setup off the back wall. There's the flying Cordova keeping the rally alive. Set up. And Daniel puts a nice reverse on that cross-court back wall pass. Three serves two. Yeah. 
There's a flying Cordova. And you're finally starting to see now Daniel Cordova starting to loosen up a little bit. Very difficult, Dave, when you come into the court Over with so much three, soreness. Two. And I wouldn't even call it nervousness. I would just chalk it up to being unbelievably sore. It looks to me like, Dave, his hamstrings and lower back are really tight or were in the first game. And now he's actually starting to move and make some of those amazing that, uh, gets that carried him to the final. Remember, Dave, he is a get artist. It's almost like a Vince two, Munoz, three. Dave. He's very slight, but he generates a lot of power, and he's got a lot of speed also. Look at that ball right there. Cordova then dumps it. Mulkern's up front. Cordova's keeping the pressure in the front court, all a one wall. Here's a big setup. You see Daniel doesn't move his feet to get in a good position, and Martin does on the back wall. That's the difference. Point. And Daniel's legs gone after that 33-shot rally. Some really great action there in the front court early in the rally, Dave, Together and then it was Martin three. pushing Daniel back. Short. See Daniel trying to get himself into position to really Second crank serve. into this ball right here. Watch Daniel, his footwork during the serve. Well, Daniel's still struggling to recover from that last 33-shot rally. He's breathing with his mouth open right Point. now, and that's what happens there, Dave. Time out. It's your first when you can't get your three. breath, the next point, you don't really have the ability to make the gets, and you see Daniel not able to even come close to a ball that was hit about six inches high. Let's take an instant replay of that very last rally during this one-minute timeout, Dave. The score here is four to three with Mulkerns from UCD up in game two. He won the first one, 21 to eight. Cordova does look like he's a little tired in there. There's been a lot of handball played here. You said nine matches for Mulkerns. I believe, Dave, this was the 33-shot rally, which is also a great rally to watch. And this is a ball that Daniel should have done more with. Look at how close that is to his body there. He should have jumped out to his left. And then once Daniel didn't do anything with that setup, it was Martin completely in control. You see how Daniel hung back there after that shot as if to say, I hope you hit it back here because I'm not running forward to the middle of the court again. And this kid's in top condition, too, Dave Fink. Well, he needs to get a little bit stronger, but I agree with you, Dave. He's got tremendous conditioning, but handball conditioning comes down more to the interval, the short spurts, combined with the long endurance conditioning. But you have to be able to bounce back after those long rallies and be able to play the next two or three points because if you play a long rally and you don't have the wind to compete for the next two or three points, those are very difficult lapses to overcome. Time in. Four serves three. I have not yet seen Martin breathing heavily. Haven't seen any fatigue affecting his game. Point. The only fatigue that I've seen, Dave, is when John Hingey made that comeback from 16-1 to 1 down in the second three. game. Martin looked completely gassed there. But other than that, Dave, he's been very solid. There's a rare air there from Martin. But you see the difference between these two guys, Dave. Martin really seems like he has a plan. He's got a system in place where he knows what he's going to do with every shot. Three, sir. It's almost predetermined. Daniel's a great shot maker, but I don't see as much strategy from Daniel. And that was a terrible hand air. Five, sir. Three. Score here is five to three. This is the second game. First one went to Mulkerns, 21 to eight. Look at this setup off the back wall. McCurns just strokes that ball, dug out by Cordova. But the Irish style of handball, Dave, similar to Set the up. NFL, where they come out with the first 15 plays are scripted, so they're going to call those first 15 plays Three, regardless sir, of the five. situation. The Irish come out with a system, Dave, and from everywhere on the court, they know exactly what shot they're going to hit. There's no indecision. Point. 
similar to the Four, Chapman 75. style of play, Dave, where they know exactly what they want to do. Cordova paddles that ball on the left. Very nice shot Front there court. from Daniel. At five. Able to change the speed of a ball after it's being shot at you. That was a short ball, no call. Able to change the direction or the speed of the ball is very difficult, Dave. What goes through your mind when you have a ball blistered by or in front of you by, let's say, a Luis Moreno or Nadia Alvarado? How are you able to, good to you? change that and, and cut it down and do one of those paddle kills? Yeah. Well, I never have, so. <laughs> Together at five. <laughs> but you're right, it is a very difficult shot. Daniel has that shot in the front court, particularly with the stiff arm left. Short. I'm surprised Danny didn't appeal that serve. It was clearly short by about three inches. Second serve. And I'm not sure we even have line judges here for this finals match. I mean, at least it wasn't announced for us. Well, a lot of times, guys, or Dave, these guys forget to appeal after a long rally, and that was a 17-shot rally, and I just don't think Daniel remembered the serve. That up. Daniel back into the box here. Together at five. Predict this one's going to be a much closer. Malkern's kill shot is starting to lift. Well, and now Daniel is starting to kill. So we could Six, see a tiebreaker here, Dave. Well, Malkern's has had two times the matches than Danny. Nine matches for Malkern's. This is fourth and a half match for Cordova. You talk about Martin. Martin wanted to slam all four years. He hasn't won anything yet. He's already talking about eight championships. Five serving six. Well, if you don't have high hopes, that's a short ball, no call. That's what I hate about these short calls, that these guys are going all out, and it could be reversed. Although it won't be here because I'm not sure we have line judges. Wow, that was Ooh. blistered. Point. Cordova's not going to be able to walk for three weeks after this tournament, Dave. He's running on fumes in there right now. Pair of sixes. We're all together at six. Screen, no call. I like that no call. Martin had a shot with his right hand. Cordoba does like to play close. And there's the diving Cordoba. That one's going to leave a mark. As I heard you say during one of my voice checks, Dave, when you go down on the ground there and you're so tired, you just don't want to ever get up. I think Cordoba was feeling that. Right there, do I have to get up? Sometimes it feels so good seven, just to stay seven, there. Six. Seven serve six. Short. Sometimes you're so exhausted you can't even reach your hands up to tell the ref you want to time out. And you're kind Second of afraid serve. to because you might just fall asleep. Hmm. Set up. That was a nice defensive paddle right there. It turned into an offensive shot for Cordova. That's the shot that will Six, force a tiebreaker here and give Daniel a chance to win this championship. That front court re-kill. Beautiful return there from Martin. But they Daniel's had a lot of opportunities right at that short line with Martin driving the ball right at him. But Daniel's quick enough and has seven, good enough seven, hands seven, that he six. can re-kill those balls. And if he makes a commitment to that and executes that shot, you will see a very competitive second and third That's games. Point. Eight, serving six. Eight to six, you heard the referee. Point. And this would be a good time for a timeout for Daniel as things starting to get away from him slowly here as he led 6-5. Nine, serving six. And it's been all Mal Kearns in the last four points. Short. Second serve.
point. Cordova getting somewhat close to Mulkerns on that shot right there. These guys are just pounding the ball right now, Dave. Well, Daniel, Daniel's level in conditioning has dropped about 5 or 10% in the last five minutes. And the, serving six. That's the difference between Daniel playing close with Mulkerns and now Daniel losing five consecutive rallies. Set out. Six, serving ten. If you watch the difference between these guys' strokes, Dave, Mulkerns uses his legs, gets his power from the ground up on virtually every swing. Daniel swings mostly just with his upper body, even when he has a big setup in the front court. That time he steps into it and uses his legs. You see him actually point to his legs there. Seven, serves ten. And Daniel changing speeds there during the rally and Martin making the air. That was a, about a 70 mile per hour change up in baseball. Eight, serving 10. Amazing Good serve point. there from Daniel Cordova. Nine serving 10. Score now is nine to 10. Short, Short ball, second serve coming up. Looked like Second serve. Daniel really could have been in trouble there. As Martin scored five consecutive points, but now Daniel scored three, and he's right back in this second game. And now another Time air out. there from Martin uh, as the ball jamming right into his stomach. It's your first. Couldn't do anything with it, Dave. And a timeout being called by Martin Mulkerns. You're watching the 60th United States Handball Association's Four Wall Collegiate National Championships. Danny Cordova from Chihuahua, Mexico, attending college at UTEP, University of Texas, El Paso, just over the border from Juarez, where he lives with his father. And then you've got Martin Mulkerns from University College Dublin in Ireland. Taking a quick breather here, talking to Sean Linney. See that these guys have created a friendship here this weekend, a kinship, I like to call it. Saw them earlier yesterday after Martin's win. Sean had him off to the side talking about handball in Ireland. Does that bother you, Dave, as a huge fan of American handball, that Sean Lenning, who's one of the premier players and premier coaches, is talking to Martin Mulkerns and not Daniel Cordova. Sean Lenny's very cerebral. He talks to these players with one thing in mind, and that is to get into their head for mm. future events. I could see those two playing in a national championship, and Martin could hold on to something that Sean said from 2012 and 2017. And this is how Sean Lenny works. So does it bother me? No, it doesn't. <laughs> I embrace it. Maybe somebody can give us the results in 2017, Dave, when we've disappeared long ago. <laughs> I will be in North Lake Tahoe. I'm just letting you know now. Have you already picked out your assumed name? Or you yeah. won't even reveal that to me. There will be the word Chuck involved. I'm mm. not sure if it's first or last. Okay. All right, guys, time in. Together at 10. We're all 10. together at 10 here. Second game after Cordova loses the first one, 21 to 8. Martin goes to the mystery ball, attempts it twice in a row with his left hand. Look at and that look ball. At <laughs> Unbelievable sidearm fist that actually punches back. That's exactly what you want to do with that fist shot. But that one had a lot of, 11, a lot of wrinkle on it, Dave. Well, I don't think Martin's ever seen that shot before. He didn't react at all to the spin that you and I both knew was coming. Well, these Chihuahuans know how to spin the ball. Mm. Danny Cordova will play with any ball. This is a huge setup. It's one of our longest rallies here so far in the tournament, Dave. And this is a big setup hold for on, Cordova, on. and that should be an avoidable hinder. 
I don't believe the avoidable was called there. And that was a big setup off the back wall. Over. 11, serving 10. 11 to 10, score, no avoidable. They don't call those at the collegiate level. Martin would not have complained either. Well, you don't want to hurt any of these young guys' feelings. It's all about feeling good here. Here's another setup. I know you don't like that play from Danny jumping in front, but... No, Martin doesn't either. He's just kind of taking the play off. Side out. Sloppy rally there, Look, Dave, from both guys. Watch Martin Mulkerns. He looks back at the referee and says, he screened me. I, I bet you he walks out and says something to the ref here. That is frustrating. There's no reason a player should just come right back in front of you when you're about ready to hit a ball. They're just getting in position for themselves. I know you don't like it either, Dave. I don't think anyone really likes it when someone's jumping in front of your shot. Side out. There's a side out. And, you know, the player's argument would be, well, I'm just trying to get back in position. Well, that's true, but you can't do it at the expense of the shot of your opponent. 11 serving 10. 11 serves 10. There's a lot of cooperation that needs to take place in a handball court, Dave. Even though you're competing against your opponent, you have to cooperate together for a fair match to get out of one another's way. And most guys are very good about doing that. Going back on that thought about American handball versus Irish, I, I have never rooted for 11. an American only because they were from America. I was waiting for that. Well, I, it bugs me when people will even bring that up. To me, Tony Healy, I, I rooted for him every single time he played, even when he played against you. Hmm. He's not from America. Some guys just deserve to win. Tony, Owen Kennedy, love him. Hmm. Malton McCurns now gets that point here. I mean, we're big fans of the Cordovas. They've supported us, we support back. And I'm not rooting for any particular player here. I just love rooting for good handball. Right now we're tied at 11. I believe it is good handball here. Together Both players starting, to, players starting to wear down just a bit. You've seen longer rallies and the ball lifting. You're seeing very few of those first right strike three-shot rallies here in this second game. That was one of the shortest rallies we've seen here. Just five shots with a Daniel Cordova kill down the right wall. Deadlocked at 11. It's point. And there's 12, the announcers cursing 11. Dave as Daniel Cordova comes in and scores a point on an unreturned serve. For those of you watching this live broadcast at raceforeight.com, you can now go to raceforeight.com on demand and watch all of the matches from the tournament thus far. 13, serving you can 11. Watch all of them, all, all the, the previous matches. If you're a fan of Kim Butcher from Utah, you can root for her, although she did lose in the finals. I know we have a big fan base for Kim Butcher. I saw that she... 11, so Lost earlier. Has to be frustrating for the Butcher clan. She lost to Christina Rude from Minnesota. That was the women's Division I B class. But you could watch that match that she had earlier 12, serves 13. in the tournament. Well, Kim was certainly one of the best doubles players that we watched here throughout this event. Just had that uncanny ability 13, to end rallies 12. in that left corner with her paddle kill. Short. But you can watch all the matches from this tournament live right now at raceforeight.com on demand if you have a paid subscription. Cordova serving here. And this one's going to come right down to the wire, Dave. Maybe even tiebreaker. Cordova's playing like he did yesterday and Martin Mulkerns is Starting to get tired. Nine matches he's played over a four-day span. 
This is Cordova's fifth. Beautiful left there from Cordova. Point. And another point for Cordova. And a fist pump. Really a great left hand, though. That ball came at Daniel with a lot 12. of pace and heat. Came back with a full swing reverse. It's going to be a timeout called for Martin Malkurns as Cordova scores his 15th point. And they're going crazy in Juarez, Mexico. As Cordova is starting to break away now, Dave, it looks like Malkurns is going to have to get some coaching on the sidelines. I'm not sure he's going to even talk to anybody, but I think it would be smart. What an incredible turnaround, and it shows you the mental strength of Daniel Cordova, who's never intimidated and never backs down, regardless of the score, regardless of the first game or how he's playing. He just keeps pushing Dave every point. He plays every point like it's 0-0 zero, zero or 10-10 in the tiebreaker. Daniel telling me that he doesn't think the match is ever over until he's shaking hands. Well, that's a good philosophy to have. This place is really hopping with handball players and fans from all over the world right now. Show court is completely crazy on that left side wall, which you can't really see from this vantage point. Danny Cordova lucky not to step out of the court during that timeout, and I'm sure All you right, think that's in. a smart decision, Dave. 15, serving 12. I like seeing players stay in the court when they're on a roll during a timeout, and then and it's if another you're, point. If you've caught a timeout to slow down the mem momentum, then you go out of the court and try and 12. mix things up a little bit, regroup. Short. But you certainly don't want to regroup when you've just won six consecutive points. Second serve. Well, Cordova's five away from forcing a tiebreaker. Well, Kearns is tired, Dave. His legs are not functioning the way they were in previous rounds. Well, this is the only the second time in this event that we've seen one of Malkern's opponents able to apply pressure, and he's not responding well to it, Dave. He, He's sort of that alpha type of dominant player. If he's not able to dominate and control the action, his game falls apart completely. We saw that against Jonathan Hingey in the second game, and now we're seeing it against Daniel Cordova, who's just completely dictating play, driving balls at his feet. Well, as soon as Cordova put on that green shirt that says Mexico on it, 19, Everything changed. 12. It's like his power pellets. Sure. Now up 19 Thanks, to 12, know, two really points cool. away from taking Second this Irishman to a tiebreaker. And it's going to be a much, much needed five minute break, too, Dave. Well, I don't think it's needed for Daniel Cordova. Well, he might not even leave the court for five minutes. It's Gotta incredible, Dave, how Daniel looked like he was spent. Now he looks as fresh as his first match of the event, and it's Martin Malkerns who's lost all the momentum. Look at this amazing play from Daniel Cordova. Now the crowd's getting behind it. You think that Cordova's Take waiting for the, the big crowd to get here? Because as soon as they showed up, he's just been a completely different person. Well, Daniel game told point, me that he doesn't 12. even notice the crowd, and I believe him. It's his game Short. point to force a tiebreaker, and I believe we're going to go to it. You thought I was good? Good? All right, two serves. And apparently, Dave, we do have line judges. And that short call was overturned. It'll be a first serve for Daniel Cordova. I don't understand how Danny caught that ball, though. We had two people who said it was good, so. And there it is. Danny Cordova okay, takes. Right. Mal Martin Malkerns to a tiebreaker. They're going to go to 11 points. We're going to take a quick timeout. It's the 60th United States Handball Association's four-wall collegiate national championships in Springfield, Missouri. We're at Missouri State University at the Plaster Sports Complex where Danny Cordova lost the very first game by the score of 21 to 8. But he comes back and he takes game number two to force a 11-point tiebreaker in the men's Division I Open Finals. We'll be back in just a bit. Stay here at RaceForEight.com.
Tiebreaker up to 11. And we are back surfers. live in Missouri at the Plaster Sports Complex for the 60th Started United States Handball Association's Four Wall Collegiate zero. National Championships tiebreaker for the Men's Open Division I class. And that ball just overstruck from Martin Mark Horns, who's up against Danny Cordoba. We're playing to 11 points, Dave. Both players overhitting here in this first rally, the tiebreaker. So important to get off to a good start in the tiebreaker. This can be a setup. Even though it was Martin completely losing momentum there in that. I think that was a hinder. There was contact there. Even though Martin losing all the momentum there, Dave, in that second game, if he jumps out to a three or four nothing lead in the tiebreaker, he's got the momentum back. Over, zero serving zero. Back to zero to zero. What was that contact on a backswing? Their, their feet were tangled up there as Daniel went for that crack out on the left wall. Oh, and there's a side out with Cordova. I believe you taught him that shot, Dave. The right wall, front wall, left wall kill. I do mine on purpose. Mm, that was on accident. Zero to zero. Cordova representing University of Texas El Paso. And there's a point. Pins Martin back, goes to the right corner kill. Crowd is very vocal here, Dave. You know, I don't know what this does to a player, but Cordova's representing a school as an independent. So he has Amazing no other get. teammates to back him up and no moral support. And you see all the clapping coming from those from Ireland and the friends that Zero, Martin Mulkerns has made here at this tournament. Cordova's just sort of the lone wolf. Well, Lake Forest has almost adopted Daniel Cordova. They really like this young kid, and they're supporting him here, Dave. There's about... 30 Lake Forest players here, and they're all supporting Daniel. Of course, Martin has the support of all the Irish that are here. 18 players plus a number of coaches and trainers. Look at this rally right here. And the crowd loves it here. Show court side to the left, where all of the Irish players are lined up. You know, in Ireland, it's really quiet in the gallery, but it isn't One, here in the United one. States when the Irish travel over. Well, the Irish sensing that Daniel Cordova has fans supporting him, so they're doing the same for Martin, giving him that support. Replay. You heard Danny say sorry? This very well could over, become an one, instant classic, one. Dave. We're in a national final here, now in a tiebreaker. These guys incredibly evenly matched. I could see this going all the way down to the wire, Dave. Very little separating these two guys right now. And there's a terrible hand there right there from Cordova. Gives a point to McKerns. Well, Daniel decelerating his swing there. He tried to take a lot off of that shot two, serving one. by almost stopping at the point of contact. And that causes a lot of hand errors. Beautiful corner kill. Daniel hasn't used the corner kill that much. And... Martin not reacting well to it. One serving two. Great defensive shot right there from Cordova. See what this does. I think it's going to be another one of those tough scrapers. That ball hitting Cordova right in the back. One serving two. Short. Referee calls that short. Short. Cordova is appealing. It's not going to be overturned. Second serve. He blistered that ball down the left wall. Not a good serve there from... Daniel. And this is what happens, Dave, when you hit that weak serve. Martin completely takes control of the rally. Blasts the first ball about four inches high and the second one two inches two high in the left one. corner for 
the side out. Hits that ball into the ground, dips it in. Now Cordova, wanting the ball to be checked, bounces it back. This time place out. is rumbling, and there's going to be a timeout called. I think two. this is probably pretty smart, although you only get a couple of those. I'm not sure exactly who called it, but I think it's smart in the sense that uh, both of these players, Dave, are completely gassed. Danny Cordova's been on the court for two hours straight now. He got here at... 13 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock, stepped right onto the court, and he stayed there for the next 47 minutes, warming up by himself. And now one hour later, plus four minutes, still on the court here, and he's not leaving during this timeout. That's some tired legs right there, although he had that whole wall open, decided to go one inch high, and could have probably got by with about six to eight inches. Well, it's hard to hit the ball with a big reverse from that angle with your body falling into that left side wall. So he had, if he had hit the ball a little bit higher, Dave, it would have hit with a natural bounce into that left wall and Daniel would have been able to run it down. These guys, Dave, have already played 12 rallies in this tiebreaker, but the score is only two to one. There's been mostly side outs. So despite the score only being 12 to one, Dave, they've played already 10 rallies of 12 shots or more in this tiebreaker. All right, time in. One, serving two. Referee says one to two. Nice serve right there. First time he's sold that serve down the right, and Martin was leaning to the left, tied Together to two now. And the diving Cordova gets that ball up front, but it's just short. He was actually flying there, Dave. Thought he needed a parachute. He was in the air for so long. That, that was a nine-foot dive from start to finish. Dave, you have to be impressed with both of these players. This is a very exciting final, and they are they're playing tough. Beautiful shot from Daniel Cordova. Not an easy shot at all as the ball comes off the left side wall from about 24 feet. And Daniel takes the spin and rolls it in the left corner. And yes, they're very impressed by the level of play and the electricity that these guys are generating here. This is incredible. That ball does not come out, and two straight points now for Cordova. Excuse me, a side down and a point. Three serving two. Three to two, score here. Going to 11, winner will win the national championship. And there's now the fourth point. You see Mulkerns is starting to get tight. And I'm starting to Four, etch now, two. Dave. Daniel Cordova completely in control here. It's like Danny's getting stronger, Dave. And there's another point and a timeout called from Martin Malkerns, and Dan Cordova feels it. He's given us the fist pump, and he's walking up to the front court. He's not going to come off this court right now. Even if he wants a drink of water, he's not going to do it. It's so tight in here, so quiet, Dave. Well, Martin Malkerns is completely out of sorts right now, Dave. The shots that were second nature to him throughout this tournament are now skipping into the ground. He's not driving the ball with power. And I think he's lost a lot of confidence. And Daniel Cordova, just the opposite, Dave, is he's brimming with confidence. And he's really feeling it. This is a great feeling as a player, Dave. You've taken your opponent's best shot in the first game, came back established yourself and now you find yourself just 
six points from this national championship when it seemed like you were about to be boat raced out of this final just about 45 minutes ago. Danny Cordova was really sore, very tight. His very first throws this morning on the court as we sat here watched him warm up were not Five, impressive at all. And he was flexing six, his shoulder. Eight. Now he's in here. He looks like he can do anything with his body right now. Well, like I said, Dave, once that adrenaline gets pumping and you break that initial sweat, that soreness is generally gone. And we've seen that quite a bit in Six, finals, Dave, sir, with players two. coming out very slowly in game number one, and then their body finally warms up and they're different players for the remainder of the match. This is unbelievable. Cordova up 6-2. to two. This would be, if he gets it, the biggest win of his career. And there is the side out from Martin McCurns. He's talking to himself in the front court here. Well, Martin's unable to kill anything thus far in the tiebreaker, and he Two, wins that point six. on a pretty good pass shot and a slight hand air from Daniel Cordova. Oh, look at that. Mulkerns is just tight. His legs are very shaky, Dave. Six, that was a leg seven, shot right there. Unable to take that extra step. Cordova, on the other hand, is just Second stroking this ball as hard as he can. I think he feels it. Replay, check the ball. It's really quiet in here right now. They're only cheering after the play is over. After a point is scored, I should say. Over six, serving two. Six to two. We're going to 11. Cordova trying to get five points to win the Open Collegiate National Championships. I'm just wondering when the parade is gonna kick off in Juarez. Well, it will be a huge month the ball. For the Cordova, should Daniel the ball, pull please. out this match, he's just five points from being the national champion. And his brother Thank Luis, you. Dave, has Six, just seven, recently moved into the top eight on the pro tour. So it's Good. been the month of the Cordova. Actually, I think Six, he's in two. the top nine. Second serve. But I was he is talking invited. about race standings. Okay. That's I mean, the is only there anything else? I like to look at. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you're referring to the power rankings, Dave. Over, two, serving six. That one's played over, two to six. Cordova stepped on Mulkern's foot. Uh-oh, this one's gonna make it. Cordova jumps up after that play. I'm not sure, look at that left hand to get to the front wall. Crowd loves it. Amazing gets from Daniel Cordova, particularly that left hand into the back wall, Dave, and now he's neutralized the rally. Two in a row to the back wall from Cordova. And he's unable to get that one, and the crowd likes it. And I agree with what Martin's saying right here. Cordova jumped up after he dove for that ball and got what? back into position. I don't hmm. know how the referee doesn't call that. Let's take a quick instant replay of that last rally, Dave. Wall. You'll see what I'm talking about, okay. Dave. Once you're on the ground, you have to stay on the ground, and that's All what right. Martin's telling the referee here. Well, this is the end of the rally. We need to go back a little bit before that shot. I know what you're saying, but he was, you didn't get up until after you were hitting We the do ball. have about 45 seconds left, so we can see that entire rally. If our truck can load that up, Dave. I, I disagree with what the referee just said, that he jumped up after you hit the ball. It's not what happened. Well, in any event, this is a great here rally is, to watch. Here. Well, I don't see any avoidable there or hinder. I'm not sure where, where that hinder or avoidable would have been. Daniel had plenty of room to get up and not affect the shot. Well, he's going to blast the ball right down the middle of the court. Cordova runs right into the spot where he's going to hit it. From the ground to the, to the front. The was in the air. Now, I know you disagree with it because we're looking at it in slow motion, but if you were a player watching that ball track from the ceiling down to the ground and all of a sudden yeah. someone shadows in front of you, it should be staying on the ground there, right? Well, I thought the angle that Daniel took still gave Martin the entire court and didn't affect his but shot. Now, doesn't the rule book say that once you're on the ground, you have to wait till your opponent hits the ball to, before you get up? You can't just 
jump up and go in front of them while they're in the process of well, hitting I don't the ball. Think, I don't think he did go in front of them. I mean, well, we saw it there. I thought that there was a clear path to the ball and there was a clear no, path that's to not seat. No, that's not what it says in the rule book. So if you dive in, uh, up against the back wall, you have to lie down there against the back wall? Well, if you're in front so of your opponent. Short. I didn't think he was in front. What do you mean he wasn't in front? Uh, I second. thought he was to the side of him and didn't really affect his vision or shot. I guess maybe you're looking at a different teleprompter mm. here. Different high-def screen than I am. Mm. Maybe a different match altogether. <laughs> Possible. We're watching handball here, and there's a skip in from Mel Kearns. Six, serving three. Six to three. Oh, there's the side out. Crowd erupts. Daniel should have put that ball away instead of Instead, he sets up Martin, and Martin takes care of it in the Three, right six. corner. Nice dig right there from O'Kearns. Cordova's able to track every ball down, Dave. That was a, a great track, track down. And Martin doesn't even look to kill that back wall setup, Dave. Oh, Cordova hits that side wall and clips it. Time is running out for Mulkerns. He's going to have to be aggressive and go for some of those kill shots, Dave. Well, Dave, people ask where the next generation of handball superstars is. I think you're seeing it right now. These guys both under 20 years of age. These guys are absolutely incredible. And Daniel falling victim to the announcers, cursing with a terrible air there on one of the easiest setups that he could have hoped to hit. But he was going for a, a one-inch high kill shot. That's the difference. And there's another terrible shot right there. You get a couple of those in the row, and all of a sudden your your spirit four, serving six. gets zapped four to six. Well, your decision-making certainly changes under pressure. Man, Malkerns is plastering that ball. Daniel needs to start letting his swing go. Well, Kearns was not happy that Daniel ran in front of him on that shot. Ball checks up, Danny runs in front, and Kearns actually is frustrated and then still goes for the kill shot and gets it. I think it might even have relaxed him a little bit because he was mad. Dave, I know you don't think it's a big deal, but you just can't run in front of a guy like that when you're in the middle of your shot. Well, it's not that big a court, so sometimes you do have to move around a little bit. Can't be a stationary target. Nice get right there from Cordova. And now another point for McCurns, and Danny's going to have to call a timeout here if McCurns scores another point. And this is what we saw in the first game, Dave. Malkerns completely dictating play. Daniel Cordova's had opportunities here in the last four rallies, but he's not swinging through his kill shots. There it is again. Malkerns now scoring the seventh point. There is a mark on the scorecard there. Now four points away. Danny looks like he's tired Seven, or six. hurt. One of the two because he's wincing back there, Dave. I believe he's exhausted, but he has to realize, Dave, that he's just five points from winning a national championship. It's easy for us to say here in the booth, but can he summon the energy necessary? And he finds it there, Dave, with an amazing kill down the right side wall. You wonder why he doesn't take a timeout here, regroup, get his win, Dave, and make a big push towards that 11th point. The crowd now clapping Six, both ways seven, here, seven. pretty much equal for the first time today after each one of these players score. It's going to be a setup. 
This could be the seventh point for Cordova. Pretty good swing there from Daniel, but didn't put it away. But a, an amazing ceiling shot there, Dave, that hugs the left side wall, comes straight out off the back wall, and Martin had no play on it whatsoever. Danny Cordova asking for a towel. And this is a veteran move from Danny Cordova. We haven't seen the towel on the court yet in this match day, but this will give Daniel about 40 seconds of recovery time. I'd like to see Danny call a timeout after this towel wipe. Well, that, that may be too veteran. <laughs> that's a that's a veteran pro move. It's also a veteran move to wipe your towel all over that disgusting floor and then put it all over your face. That's true. That's what handball players do. Danny could call a timeout right here and squeak out another minute if he wanted to. But he's not going together to. Together at 7. We're all together at 7. Going to 11. Winner wins the national title. That's a screen. Back to the roof. And a missed shot right there, and now it's a side out. Martin set Daniel up there five shots in a row during that, that rally. Daniel seven. unable to put any of them away, and I thought he should have shot the last one. He hits a ceiling shot that doesn't make it to the front wall. And all of a sudden, Dave Martin, who didn't give Daniel more than five setups in the entire first game, has set up every shot that he's hit in the last three rallies. And you'll notice it, Dave. Daniel has an opportunity to shoot every ball that Martin's hitting right now. Pair of sevens. Every person in this club is watching this match Let's right now. It. There's the flying Cordoba. That's a huge setup. And Daniel does not put it away, but he has another one, and this time he does find the bottom board. And he gets the eighth point. That was an incredible get from Malkerns, and Danny just eight, poked it down seven, the right seven. wall. Eight to seven, serve here, going to 11. Three points away from a national championship. To join that long list, 60 names. Oh, unbelievable inside-out left-handed punch down that left wall just about four inches know, high, and there's going to be a timeout nine, called for Martin Malkerns. Cordoba now at nine, Martin at seven. This is an incredible match of endurance. And Dave, one time we, we had a conversation. We, we talked about a guy like Paul Brady playing Dave Chapman in the first round. It's pretty much even. They could play, you know, we're talking about two or three years back where Paul Brady and Dave Chapman, there's a good chance Chapman could beat Paul Brady in that very first round of play, but on the fourth or fifth round of play, Paul Brady just keeps the pressure on, and he's as strong in that fourth or fifth round than anybody you probably have ever witnessed in your entire life. Here, it was obvious that Mulkerns was, was the dominant player, but because of that stamina, because of that athleticism, Danny Cordova and that heart that he possesses did not give up, and you have to put that into the factor. Someone might be a better player than you, but you might have better stamina and heart and well, will to survive. Stamina and heart is all part of being a better player. So I think the better player is the guy that wins. Time in. Nine, serving seven. Nine to seven. I disagree. Hmm. And I also disagree that Dave Chapman could beat Paul Brady in one of the opening rounds. <laughs> Very much so, as a matter of fact. I was just using that as an example. Maybe it was a bad example. It wasn't a good one. Wow, Cordoba. I thought he had it. There's the diving Cordoba at the feet of Mulkerns. And guess what? Cordoba's one point away. Well, Cordoba dives in and drills that ball 65 miles per hour, Dave, as he's diving. Most of the time, you the see guys right diving, there. just flipping the ball back into the play. He dove and crushed that ball with his left hand. Check the ball, please. Possible match point, serving seven. Here it is, match point. Cordova bounces the ball. 
And I thought he was going to get an ace serve right there. He goes for it. Amazing get there from Daniel. That's one of the best I've ever seen. Great ceiling shot from Daniel. It's going to be a setup. Oh, and Mark Kearns hits that ball two inches high. Ice in his veins. Forcing that side out. Now he needs four points to win this Seven, national three, championship. Ten. Going back to that serve that gave him so many points in the first game. Here it is. And there's a point right there with Malkerns getting to number eight now. This is an unbelievable match. This is the best game I've ever Eight, seen. Serving 10. <laughs> it is absolutely incredible. If the players have half as many butterflies as I do here <laughs> in the booth, I don't know how they can even hit the ball. This could be side out. Terrible shot there from Daniel. Oh, and now Malkerns has the ninth point. Cordova wants to get that side out. Daniel's had so many opportunities here in each of the last three rallies, right, including when he served for the match. Kern stepped in. Down by four. Now he's within two of the win. And he gets that shot right there. The crowd's going crazy. We're all together at 10. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. You can't ask for anything more than this, Dave. 10 10 in the national championship Possible final. Point, One ten. point to decide it all. Here it is. This could be the winner. As soon as he changed that serve, Dave, everything changed. Cordova with the setup. This could be it right here. And it is. Martin Malkerns comes back and gets five straight points to take down Daniel Cordova. Unbelievable chain of events right there as Malkerns from the University College of Dublin comes back and takes down young Danny Cordova from University of Texas, El Paso. How did it happen, Dave? It was Daniel Cordova serving for the match at 10-7, Dave, in the tiebreaker and just did not take advantage of three setups during that rally, played a little bit too conservatively. Martin able to earn the side out. Martin came in, hit a great kill shot to take it to eight, and then Dan Daniel Cordova made that terrible error at nine, and then Martin won those last two rallies with some brilliant handball, and Martin erases that three-point deficit and match point down to come back and win a thrilling 11-10 tiebreaker here to win his first ever USHA National Collegiate Singles Championship. I cannot believe what just happened here. Cordova led throughout that tiebreaker, Dave. He was up big while Kearns gets that side out on a very gutsy revolving door kill shot that was only two inches high. He gets back in and scores those straight points to win after he changed his serve, went back to the one that gave him all those points in the first game. Unbelievable chain of events here in Missouri as Martin Mulkerns defeats Danny Cordova in one of the greatest matches that we've ever had on this live broadcast. Coming up next, it'll be Katrina Casey from the University of Limerick versus Maria Dugas from LFC. The women's finals, Division I Open Singles, coming up next at the 60th. USHA Four Wall Collegiate Nationals at RaceForEight.com. Next, stick with us. Hello, I'm Bruce Fabrizio, inventor of Simple Green. Our non-toxic, biodegradable, all-purpose cleaner works great for cleaning it. Thank you. Non-toxic, biodegradable, Simple Green. It's great for cleaning.
So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. For 20 years, the Inner City Handball Association has educated, mentored, and served young people through handball. Young people that participate in the Inner City Handball Association programs have a high graduation rate from high school and continue on to college. Inner City Handball teams are good athletes, good students, and good ambassadors for the sport of handball. We need your help to continue our work. Inner City Handball Association is a registered 501c3 tax-exempt charity. Please donate today. Thank you.